Hey guys, Justin Cooey here, one half of the Platinum Estates team with Rematch Realtron, your personal real estate consultant. Just wanted to take the time to separate into two videos, two questions that have been thrown my way recently uh, that um, I felt would be a good opportunity to address my personal uh, opinion on regards to uh, what's going on with the market. Um, number one, the one question I'm asked is, do I believe that Toronto can continue to sustain the price growth uh, that we've been experiencing over the last several years? Uh, this video, I will definitely answer that question. I believe that the answer is yes. The second question is that in regards to the housing market bubble, do I believe that it's coming in within the next two to three years? I will say I don't believe so, but it depends on what happens with uh, other global conditions uh, and as well as uh, local interest rates so uh, i go into detail with that in this video here uh talking about the uh, international real estate prices why don't we compare toronto which i firmly believe is an uh, international city um depending on whether or not it's world class everybody has their own different opinion but the bottom line is that from time to time we are compared uh, with the likes of new york los angeles uh, vancouver um, Hong Kong, Toronto, uh, Hong Kong, London, Beijing, Paris, uh, so on and so forth. Now, the bottom line is that we need to understand we're not paying international real estate prices. Uh, depending on the metropolis you go to, you can pay anywhere on average between $1,500 to $2,500 per square foot. However, depending on the neighborhood you go into to Toronto, you can expect to pay anywhere between $450 to $700 per square foot. Of course, you can, expend, uh, you can expect to pay a premium depending on the neighborhood you go into, like Yorkville, where you can go up to $1,000 per square foot, give or take a few dollars. Now, that being said, uh, because as you see here, looking at the other international cities, uh, because they've achieved it, I don't see any reason why Toronto can't. So some of the driving factors that I believe uh, will contribute to that, number one, is population. Let's look at the global community as a whole. Number one, we know that, and we, I'm sure we can agree, we're not getting any smaller as a population. Uh, bottom line is that we are well over the 6 billion population mark and that we are projected to hit 7 billion within the next year and a half, if not sooner. And after we hit 7 billion, we're projected to grow exponentially and within 8 to 10 years, hit the 8 billion mark. Now, locally, in regards to Toronto, we actually see, like clockwork, uh, an immigration rates of anywhere between 80 to 100,000 new immigrants coming in every year. That being said, we got to keep in mind that to become an immigrant in Canada, you must meet certain requirements. If you meet the entrepreneurial standards, then you must have at least a minimum net worth of $300,000. Uh, if you want to uh, contribute to the Canadian government and invest, you must spend at least $400,000 or otherwise you must have a net worth of at least $800,000. So obviously, as you can imagine, a lot of uh, liquid cash uh, rolling around, uh, some of that money would go to housing that would contribute to uh, uh, price increases. Now, let's look at the projections of where we're going, what's going on uh, with the population of the city over the next 20 years. Currently, right now, 2011, we're sitting at 6 million. However, projected by 2031, we're looking to hit 9 million. So, as we can see, basically, the supply is very limited. Of course, the demand is going to grow as our population does. Now, one more factor that a lot of people are negating to understand um, and pay attention to is that Toronto still does not have a world-class waterfront. And you need to understand why that is important is because all along the lakeshore, we have known what, what is known uh, as brownfields. And there are pretty much contaminated lands that are owned by the government, which are currently right now in the process of being cleaned up uh, and as well as being uh, divided between developers um, for, um, you know, for, urban, for planning. Now, the thing is, I don't believe I have to go into the semantics of explaining that people pay heavy premiums to be uh, closer proximities to water or having unobstructed waterfront views. Now, getting to a little bit of a history which a lot of people may not know is that Toronto has a company known as the Toronto Waterfront Revitalization Corporation, whose sole uh, public mandate is to make sure that they watch over um, the waterfront development. Uh, they're in charge of that. Now, a couple of years ago, I was actually uh, given a presentation in regards to what their project proposal was, which was pretty much a combination of uh, community and freehold housing. The reason of why they had planned that to do so is because they knew that if left unchecked, prices on the waterfront uh, would expect uh, would experience um, a, a extreme appreciation uh, from their specific words. Uh, and the bottom line was that um, they didn't want that to happen. So of course, if they have the uh, community housing mix, 
with freehold, they felt that it would keep key prices in check and actually have uh, the waterfront overall uh, enjoyable to everyone and not be priced out um, for specific people in a, a certain um, you know financial conditions. Uh, so that was a very noble cause of that. So that being said, you just got to keep in mind that uh, overall, if left unchecked, what will happen, of course, as we've seen with some of the Lakeshore condominiums, um, what we're going to have is a lot of developers charging premiums to have uh, unobstructed waterfront access. And the bottom line is that at the higher prices, once those are paid and all of those units have been occupied and owned, then basically that is going to uh, cause a price increase coming in inland as well, too. So those are just a couple of the factors of why I know and I'm confident that Toronto can uh, appreciate uh, over the long term and that we can possibly meet some of the uh, international real estate prices that we've been seeing. Uh, maybe we'll be some years off from a way of paying an average price of $1,500 per square foot, but it's only a matter of time. Uh, thank you very much. If you have any questions, feel free to give me a call and I'd love to hear any of your comments or send, feel free to send me an email. Contact information is below. Have a great day.